What's up boys and girls, ladies and germs, my name is Matt, this is Hidden Light, and today we're talking about mounting. Don't be dirty, we're talking about mounting photographs. So, I get this question a lot. It's really popular these days, recently, to always mount your photos flat. Sometimes I agree with that, sometimes I really disagree with it, sometimes it's a terrible, terrible idea. In a nutshell, from the framing side of things, I always recommend you do as little mounting as you can get away with. If we can use photo corners or a hinge mount on your photo and it will stay flat underneath the mat board, that's the best. If you're gonna not use a mat board and get your image flush to the frame, if you can get it to sort of stay where it's told and be reasonably flat without a mount, I'm always gonna recommend you do that. Why? Mounting is where good prints go to die. Uh, if you mount a picture and something goes wrong, you have to remake the picture. If you mount it and something goes wrong to it in 20 years when someone's reframing it, or it gets water on it, or the humidity changes so that the mount starts buckling, it's ruined, you gotta go make a new one. If you don't mount the picture in a permanent way, you can always just change it later, and the print itself is separated from the mat board, the back, or the whatever, you don't have to worry about all that. Some prints are easier to do this on than others. So we're gonna start with inkjets. Inkjets, you can kind of go either way. They do have a tendency to misbehave above a certain size. I would say like 20 by 24 is the biggest I would take just a standard 260 GSM or higher. So 260, 310, 350, whatever. A, a reasonable weight paper. Any bigger than that, and you're gonna start to see more and more ripples in the paper. Uh, let's see if I brought one, I did. So, we're gonna move these. So this is a good size print. And from the lights, you'll be able to see that there's kind of a lot of ripple in this print, right? There's a lot going on. It obviously doesn't want to stay flat at all. Uh, this is a 20 by 30, and if I just put this in a frame, I'm going to see, I'm not sure if you can see on camera, but there's like a rippling, buckling sort of thing going on in this paper texture. Even with a matte board, I'm going to see that. At 20 by 30, probably mount it. It's just an inkjet. You can make another one if something goes wrong. So, contrast. Here is a similar inkjet, the exact same size. And once it's been mounted, it's flat. Don't gotta worry about it. Stick this sucker right in a frame, which actually is what I'm going to do. Um, this whole series is gonna just go flush inside of a frame. I'm not even gonna worry about it. Just putting them on the wall that way. When I'm doing ink jets, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. If something goes wrong during mounting, or if in a couple of years it unmounts itself, you know, all adhesives fail. So assume that if you're mounting something, at some point it will unmount. I could just make another one. These things are cheap to make. Not a big deal. You know, even if you're paying full price from Bay Photo or whoever else from me, you know, one of these is like a hundred and something bucks. Don't worry about it, right? Silver gelatin, next step, <laughs> is the opposite in some ways. This is a fiber base silver gelatin sheet of 11 by 14 paper, image by David Brookover. Check him out, Brookover Gallery, linked below. You, this isn't close to flat. If I use a mat board on this even 11 by 14 sheet, there's no way. Like this has been through the press, it was flattened, right? And this was recently, so it hasn't really had a lot of time to chill out, but Silver gelatin fiber base prints of pretty much any kind, you're much more likely to have to mount. Here's a 20 by 24, no, 16 by 20. And it's closer to flat. This has been printed and then flattened at least once and then left in a sleeve, which sort of helps it sort of stay flat for years. And if I tried to put a mat board on this now, I might be able to get away with it as long as the relative humidity doesn't change very much. But you can see <laughs> how not flat that really is. Uh, any fiber-based print 
definitely above 16 by 20, I'm just going to recommend you mount it. There are correct and incorrect ways to mount these. There are good adhesives and bad adhesives. You're always going to want to ask for uh, acid-free and ideally a reversible adhesive. Some of them are more reversible than others. I like to use heat-activated adhesives like Fusion 4000 or Rag Mount. We use those in our big vacuum press. They work really well for inkjets. They work really well for silver gelatins. Hell, you can use platinum palladiums and mount those if you're feeling nuts. Uh, speaking of platinums, this is a 24 by 30 or something platinum, and it is pretty darn flat. By the time I put a mat board on this, it's gonna be real close to flat. I try not to mount platinums for a couple of reasons. The first is you don't have to. Like the paper, by the time you get it out and you give it even just a cursory amount of flattening, is gonna sit pretty flat all on its own, especially if you were good about your humidity control. And the other reason is that they're really expensive to make. And if you take an expensive print and you ruin it in mounting, you gotta make a new expensive print and that's terrible. Um, we have noticed that above a certain size, you might consider mounting a platinum. Basically 30 by 40 and up, maybe. I've got some 24 by 36s in the gallery that are flawless, definitely don't need to be mounted. All you need is an overmat to sort of hold the edges flat after they've been through the press. No big deal. We did that 40 by 60 for Tyler, and then it, while it was out of my space, managed to get exposed to an awful lot of humidity, and that allowed the paper to do a lot of terrible things. So at 40 by 60, we may start mounting those just so that we don't have to worry about them rippling when they get exposed to humidity. And that's another thing about mounting. If you know you're gonna take this into a climate controlled environment and it's gonna get into a proper frame, properly sealed, and it's not gonna experience huge temperature and humidity swings, maybe you can get away with not mounting even a fiber-based print at a reasonable size, as long as you have a good mat board. But if you don't know where it's going, how it's going to be treated, what environment it's gonna be living in, sometimes it's worth just mounting it and getting it over with. Um, you'll see a lot of prints, uh, silver prints and inkjet prints go through pressure activated adhesives. I have found those to be less reliable. By that I mean I have mounted stuff following all the appropriate instructions and seen it spontaneously unmount. Not all at once, you get like a little bubble in a corner and then you get a little bubble in the middle and then the whole thing bubbles like crazy and you have to remount it or remake it. The heat activated adhesives, which are supposed to be more archival anyway, I've had fewer problems with. So that's why I will typically go with the Fusion 4000 or the rag mount in a vacuum press if I can, if we're mounting. Anyway. So, platinums, I try not to mount if I don't have to. Fibers, you're gonna have to mount. Like, let's be honest, 11 by 14 and up, probably. Sometimes you get away with an 11 by 14, but 16 by 20 and up, almost definitely, just mount it. Um, we will do the mounting, because a lot of framers won't mount prints that they can't easily replace. Like, they can't just make you a new inkjet. Because um, when you've spent, hours working on a silver gelatin in the dark room like this, it's really hard for someone else to then remake it for you. So if we make the print, we're happy to mount it. You just let us know if you want it on four ply or eight ply, we'll get the mount done for you. And um, ink jets is basically dependent on size, whether the paper's gonna behave or not. If you have questions about mounting, which is a misdemeanor in the state of Arkansas, let us know in the comments down below. Till then, see you in the next one.